Thank you, Ellie. Um, today we are here to, to talk about uh, ordinary structural steel systems. Uh, with SK Ghosh, I have, uh, we have given other seminars uh, focusing on seismic design of structural steel, but we really focused on special and, uh, in the case of moment frames, intermediate uh, systems. And that's kind of how the, the uh, AISC code is is well. There's a lot of focus on the special systems and uh, in turn a lot of research, but we felt that giving um, some time to an ordinary system, which still do have significant requirements that are important to review and to understand, uh, would be helpful to the uh, to the design community. And one of the things we'll discuss is when can you use ordinary systems because their use is more limited, namely or mainly in terms of the height of the buildings that you can use. So in their general look at the plan that we'll um, uh, go through today, we'll look a bit at the IBC requirements and the ASCE 7 requirements for ordinary systems. These focus mainly on the system limitations and other uh, height requirements, that sort of thing. Then we'll really get into the, the meat of the presentation here is to do with the AISC seismic provisions. And we'll start with those requirements that apply to all systems and specifically the two ordinary systems that we'll focus on. Uh, those two ordinary systems are ordinary moment frames and we'll have an example that deals mainly with uh, determining the forces, the required strengths of the different elements of the moment frame, and uh, follow that with an ordinary concentrically braced frame, uh, again, with an example. And at the end, we will touch on ordinary cantilever column systems. There's not a lot of requirements for that system, uh, but we will touch on what those requirements are. And just as a general introduction or you know sort of set the the frame of reference for how these documents interact and I'm sure this is nothing new to anybody uh, in the most cases we'll sort of assume you're starting with the International Building Code or uh, in this case it would be the 2012 IBC uh, the new ones are are rolling out but I think this is still the the main one to consider and that references ASCE 7 and it also references the two AISC documents um, and the ASCE 7 document as well references those ASCE, excuse me, the AISC documents in the same way. So we'll start with looking at the building code, which again, you know what's in there, but just as a, as a general outline, uh, it has the load combinations that you use for design. And it in this case references ASCE 710 for seismic loads uh, and other structural loading and also has the requirements for when to use uh, the seismic provisions basically. And the load combinations are here on this slide listed for the strength design or the LRFD which corresponds to the LRFD, uh, the load resistance factor design um, is given by AISC. These should look familiar to anyone doing LRFD design. And perhaps more familiar are the allowable stress design uh, or ASD load combinations. The other thing the, the IBC does discuss is the earthquake loads. And it points to the ASCE 7 for uh, determining what those loads are on the structure in section 1613. The other thing that comes from the ASCE 710 is when you're using the uh, seismic load combinations, the E is given in IBC, but the seismic, the seismic provisions of the ASCE 710 discuss how to calculate E and that there is a horizontal and vertical component. So the E, the overall E does have a horizontal and vertical component and tells you what those are and how to calculate them. In chapter 22 of the IBC, it does reference specifically for two sort of groupings of seismic design categories when you need to use the AISC seismic provisions. The AISC standard you know, specification will be used for all structural steel buildings, but if you're looking at seismic design categories A, B, or C, you sort of have a choice. You can take an R factor from the table that we're all familiar with in ASC 710 and use those, design for those, uh, the R factor and the other factors and use the seismic provisions. That is an option. 